Okay, the next uh, topic is about random variables. So, we start with uh, the general notion of what a random variable is and then we will go specifically into a random variable called discrete and then a random variable is called continuous. Okay. So, what is a discrete random variable? Let us look at an example. Remember the two dice example, we rolled two dice and then uh, we looked at the number that we got. So, these numbers could be a 2 or a 3 or a 4 and so on till 12. So, it is any one of these numbers, they are not equally probable. We saw earlier the probability of rolling a 4 uh, is 3 over 36 because there are 3 ways of getting a 4. You can roll a 4 as either a 2 and a 2, a 3 and a 1 or a 1 and a 3. So, there are 3 out of 36 options that will give you a 4. Now, x is a discrete random variable. So, because it takes on specific discrete values, it can either take the values 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on until 12. So, these are the values that it takes. So, therefore, uh, because it takes specific values, it is called a discrete random variable. The other type of random variable is what is called a continuous random variable. I am going to do a quick demo uh, on a website. So, if you click on this thing that says link, it will take you to a website and the website is a free calculator. So, essentially if you click this function called R and D, okay, R and D stands for random. You click R and D, it gives you a long random number. These random numbers are all numbers between 0 and 1. Let me click it one more time, you get another number. You click it a third time, you get another number. So, with several significant digits, you get a bunch of random numbers 0 0.39180 and so on. I click it again, you get another random number, click it again, you get another random. Notice that all the random numbers are between 0 and 1. So, essentially what this does is randomly generate a random, uh, I mean a number between 0 and 1. Now, one thing to notice is that this random number uh, takes on values in the continuous uh, spectrum between 0 and 1. It does not take a specific value like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and so on. As you saw, there are several decimals that get displayed. So, for all practical purposes, we think of that, ran that uh, the number that you saw as continuous because it takes values in the continuum anywhere from 0 to 1. So, uh, the set of possible values, so this is all the possible, like we saw in the discrete case where the set of possible values were 2, 3, 4 and so on to 12, this is the entire range. So, all the values uh, in the set 0 to 1, it could take any any value uh, in that set. Okay? So, the that value, that reason it is called continuous is because the value that it takes is in the continuum between 0 and 1. So, an event is something like this. This is how you write an event. The event that the random variable is less than or equal to 0.4. We saw a bunch of random numbers. So, if you ask the question, what is the probability that I will get a number that is less than 0.4? Well, it turns out that all these values are uniformly distributed between 0 and 1. So, they are all uniformly distributed. There is between 0 and 1. So, therefore, uh, a number less than 0.4 will have a probability of 0.4. A number less than 0.8 here, sorry, will have a probability of 0.8. So, uh, it is pretty straightforward and that is the reason I gave that example. We will look at many other examples later, but uh, this one is for, uh, for our purpose. An important feature is that a continuous random variable the probability that it takes on a single value is 0. So, for example, the probability that x will be exactly equal to 0 0.4381261573A2 is 0. The, the chance you will get exactly that number is practically 0. Okay? In fact, it will be exactly 0 if you, if you allow it to uh, take infinite number of uh, values, okay? infinite number of uh, decimal places. Okay. In summary, a discrete random variable is one that takes countable values. You can count them. Okay? It does not have to be a number. It could be red, blue, green if you want to, but usually it is a numerical value because most of our quantitative analysis tends to have a numerical flavor to it. And the continuous random variable take on values in the continuum usually from 0 to infinite, sometimes negative infinite to infinite, sometimes finite range from 0 to 1. Okay? So, that is uh, what we are going to see in terms of random variables. The first uh, uh, topic is going to be discrete random variables. The, till the end of this lecture, we will basically be talking about a discrete random variable. I am taking an example. Uh, 
So I'm going to let x, this is a random variable, remember, uh, be a number, uh, I'm sorry, be the number of games a particular badminton player, let's think of a woman badminton player uh, who uh, plays a lot in a final, uh, and I don't have anyone in mind. Uh, let's say she uh, has these probabilities. With probability 0.1, okay, she will win exactly zero games. With probability 0.2, she will win one game. With probability 0.7, she will win two games. Remember that uh, it's a best of three. Uh, so if she wins two games, she has won the uh, final. So therefore, uh, she would never have to play anything more than, she never have to win anything more than two games. She could have played three games, okay? Uh, uh, so, so that's what this is, the number of games that she wins in a final, all right? So x is a discrete random variable. So we call x as a discrete random variable that takes on three values. Remember last time we had a discrete random variable of rolling two dies and the number that we got took on values two, three, four, all the way till 12. This time it only takes three values, zero, one, or two. And the probabilities were 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.7. So that's how we're characterizing this random variable. Um, we will, in this course, although there is a, there's a name for this, this guy is called the probability mass function probability mass function. However, we won't use that notation. We will just represent it as a probability. <coughs> this is so that we don't have too many notations in the course. Uh, so I'm just keeping it simple. And I'll just write down the probabilities whenever we need. However, there are some very special discrete distributions. You may have heard some of these names, Bernoulli, binomial, Discrete uniform. So discrete uniform is like rolling one die, okay, and then you're getting any one of the six values, zero, sorry, not zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, with all equal probability of one six. What we saw before while we hit that R and D function in calculator, what's called continuous uh, uniform distribution. This is called discrete uniform, where it takes discrete values, okay, uh, with equal probability. Then there's a distribution called geometric, there's a distribution called Poisson. Now, we don't have to hit any of those distributions. In this course, we will not be talking about any of this, okay? We won't need this, okay? For this course. However, for other courses, I'm sure you've probably seen some of this. Now, like I said a little while ago, this probability is called the probability mass function that I said here. So the probability mass function is the probability that the random variable x takes on a value little x, okay? And uh, for all probability mass functions, the probability, uh, all the overall values of x, the probability mass function adds to 1. So if you notice here, 0.1 plus 0.2 is 0 0.3, 0 0.3 plus 0 0.7 is 1. So notice that 0.1 plus 0.2 plus 0.7 equals 1. Likewise, in the previous example, if you added up the probabilities of these guys, you will again get the value to be equal to 1. Okay, so that's a very important rule. Now. We want to talk about two other uh, notations, so or definitions, if you will. So the e of x, the expected value of x for a discrete random variable, is the sum of the product of the values that x takes multiplied by the probability mass function. So that sum is called the expected value. Uh, so expected value is also known as the mean or the average. So there are three names for it. The word expected value is actually not a nice word because Though it is not a value that you ever expect to get. In fact, there is a good chance that you will never get the expected value. We will see that in the example. So, but the, uh, so we use a different word. We call it average or mean. So if you think about this, we are asking the question, on average, how many games does the badminton player that we saw earlier, how many games does she win in each final? So that's kind of, that's like asking the expected value or the average. So let's compute that. So from the formula here that we have in the previous line, it is, so x times the probability that, so, so it is, so this one is the same as 0 times the probability that x equals 0 plus 1 times the probability that x equals 1 plus 2 times the probability that x equals 2. So that's what we have and that's exactly what's written here. So if you plug in the numbers, 0 times the probability that x equals 0 plus 1 times the probability that x equals 1 plus 2 times the probability that x equals 2. So if you do the calculations, you get 0 plus 0.2 plus 1.4. If you add those up, you get 1.6. So on average, uh, she plays one, she wins, sorry, she wins 1.6 games per 
final. Okay? So, that is her average. Now, 1.6 is not a number that you would ever see because she either wins 0 games or 1 game or 2 games. So, the expected number of games that she wins is kind of like on average how many games does she win or what is the mean. Okay, so, let us say she plays a lot of games. We took the average number of uh, wins in a final uh, divided by the total number of games, you will get the number 1.6. This is a concept that is important. At this point, if you did not follow the computation of the mean, I highly recommend that you go online and read up a little about this. One of the good sites for that is perhaps Khan Academy or something like that. Um, go ahead and read about it because it is an important concept. I know I kind of quickly ran through it. The next concept is the concept of variance. Okay? So, variance tells you how much does a random variable stay away from the mean. So, what we do is we take x, subtract it from the mean and square it. Why do we square it? Well, if we did not square it and just took the expected value, on average you would be as much to the uh, 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 less than the mean as you would be over. So, that value will be 0. So, what we want is we want to only take the uh, either we could take the absolute value or we could square which uh, the people way before us uh, decided to go ahead to do the square. So, you, so, we typically square. To compute, we normally do it like this. We take the expected value of x squared and subtract off the mean. So, this needs to be computed this, uh, this way. Okay? So, compute this way. So, how do you do that? Well, you would sum over all. So, this guy is basically the expected value of x squared. So, you would sum over all values of uh, x, the quantity x squared times the probability that the x equals little x. So, this is the probability mass function, this guy, and subtract off the expected value which we already computed before. So, the standard deviation which is a term that is frequently used, one of the reasons is it has the same units as x. So, we like to take the square root of the variance. So, when we do that, we get the standard deviation. So, let us do a little example. So, if you look at the badminton player that we had in mind a little while ago, the expected value of x square is this quantity and this guy is the expected value of x, the whole quantity squared. So, it is 0 squared times the probability that x is 0 plus 1 squared times the probability that x is 1 plus 2 squared the probability that x is 2. The probability that x is 1 is 0.1, the probability that x is I'm sorry. X is zero is 0.1. The probability that x is one is 0.2, and the probability that x is two is 0.7. Now notice this guy is two squared. This guy is one squared. This guy is zero squared. So if you did the calculations, you would get uh, zero plus 0.2 plus 2.8, right? Minus 2.56 because 2.56 is 1.6 the whole squared. Okay. So then you get. Uh, 3 minus 2.56, which is 0.44. So, if you want to get the standard deviation, you take the square root. Okay? So, standard deviation of x is the square root of 0 0.44, the square root of the variance. Okay? So, this is another uh, topic that is often uh, misunderstood and I would highly recommend going to a place such as uh, uh, Khan Academy to learn a little bit more about this topic. Uh, I would again touch upon the mean and standard deviation in, in the next topic of continuous random variables. So, so if this is not clear, we will see that again. Uh, so, let us, uh, yeah, so I think that is how much I have for this topic and we will stop here. Thank you.